Hello everybody and welcome to a special edition Andrelzic Amusement Academy. Today we're going to look at B&M Wing Coasters and B&M Wing Coasters Alone. Uh, this is because of a contest over at the Dirkling uh, multiplayer server. Uh, for this month, uh, we, they are building uh, B&M Wing Coasters. So I was asked uh, to do a stream for that. So... I figure it's going to be a little bit shorter than, than most of them, or at least I hope I don't take four hours telling you all about B&M Wing Coasters, because that would be too long. If this is your first time joining this stream, welcome in. Uh, this is Andrew's Amusement Academy. I am a real-life theme park designer who teaches uh, how to build realistic roller coasters in RCT2, uh, since that's a hobby, something I like doing. So uh, I can offer some insight about the real-life coasters while also uh, building in the game. So as we always do, we're going to get started on the coaster database, and we're going to go look and see what's there, uh, except that the coaster database isn't there because I selected the wrong one. Here it is. Okay. So there are 16 B&M wing coasters in total. Let us look at the original one. This is Raptor. Um, and just as a point of starting, I suppose, a B&M wing coaster is a you know, B&M coaster that has seats on either side of the track. So they overhang on either side. Intamin did the first of the wing coasters, um, and wing coasters are distinctly different from the Arrow 4D coaster, and the wing coasters do not have the seats rotate. So these are fixed seats that hang out from either side. Um, this was the first one at Gardaland in Italy. Uh, this is Raptor. Uh, it's a relatively short layout, uh, but has some pretty cool theming in there and uses the wing seats to advantage, uh, which is what I would recommend for these rides. This is, you know, specifically what this kind of thing or this kind of coaster does. This has a really cool availability for interaction. So it's worth worth checking out. So why don't we start and we'll watch a video of this one here real quick. Let's find Poster Force, I'm assuming. Yeah, why not? Okay, so we'll uh, we'll take a look at the Ghoster Force one here in a minute as soon as this ad is done. That is concerning. All right. a neat underground type station or at least I think it's a little bit subterranean the thing to keep in mind with these rides is that they are wide so while the RCT um, you know in-game custom object for the or custom train for the ride is one tile across you really want to go wider than that So here we go with a straight first drop, which is one of a couple of different varieties of drop into the sort of like overbank, or not overbank, but just highly banked corner. And then you'll see a lot of the inversions on these are roll inversions. So there's a big corkscrew initially. A lot of high banked corners. Another kind of roll element here. Heading back the other way, cool water splash there. And then our kind of signature element here is the long, drawn-out inline twist. And you can see all the different things that are framing the track just outside the ride envelope. That's what makes these rides what they are. I do, hey, Fred, and, and hey, Owen, what I do here that uh, Phoenix is a good one. That's definitely one of the ones that I want to take a look at here. Um, so like I said, there, there's a couple of different varieties, um, and I classify these kind of in three ways. So there's a, a good number of them that are essentially out-and-back type coasters. So this is something like Gatekeeper here at Cedar Point, which is uh, still one of the larger ones. It's not the largest at the moment, but it has uh, this element here, this roll drop, uh, dive drop is what they call it. So come off of the lift hill and then roll right into an inversion straight out uh, from the get-go. 
Uh, one of the differences with these over a lot of other B&Ms is that you're going to get more hang time on the on a lot of these elements. So like this dive drop, that inline twist that we saw going through everything. Those are the sorts of things that you're going to get on a, an inversion like or on a ride like this. So this one also has what you'll see a lot of folks in RCT do just because it's, um, you know, become somewhat of a fad as this. I would call the keyhole. Um, so the theming that goes around it. Cedar Point actually framed theirs around the um, the park entrance, which is super cool. Great, great idea. Uh, so you have this one coming in front, and then the other one coming behind. So pretty, pretty cool to see. Uh, and definitely a, a nice signature element on something like this. But I said there's a couple of different varieties. So I see kind of of three. So there's sort of this out and back variety. There are also, we consider more of the compact variety with just compact, heavy inversions and heavy turns. So Raptor kind of sort of fits in that. Um, let's look at this one, Heaven's Wing at HB World. Uh, this is the Huawei Brothers um, park in uh, China. And this one you can see is, uh, once this picture loads, is keeping very compact in here. What you can't see out front is a dive drop in this vertical loop. So it's all very compact in a very tight space here of using inversions to change directions um, like this uh, M1 thing here. There's the dive drop and then this roll that transitions sort of half zero G roll and half like slow roll. So you have this very interesting element uh, shaping. Uh, so those are sort of compact. And then you have more of the unique elements like um, or, or unique layouts like um, you know, I would say Phoenix at Toverland is uh, a bit of a unique layout. It's um, out and back, uh, sort of, but has kind of an interesting layout where it starts with a curve at the top of the lift hill before the dive drop, and then this great airtime hill uh, across the way. And then lastly, before we jump back in, look at something like um, Falcon at uh, the Wuxi uh, Sunak Land, which this is the largest wing coaster at the moment. And this one is sort of all over and just has a pretty gigantic um, array of elements and some pretty darn cool rock work at it too. So lots to see and, and pretty neat. This one does top out right at 200 feet. So that's about your, your maximum height that you're going to get to. All right, so instead of uh, looking at all these right now, we're just going to get into it and just do uh, one of these to start. We're going to kind of talk about some different varieties and different options. Uh, so for these, um, we're using the uh, custom uh, B&M wing coaster. Uh, this was one that was uh, developed by X7, um, who also does the custom tracks that you're familiar with, like the RMC tracks. We are going to use the Twister coaster on this one. We're going to start there. And then we'll go to the rest. Yeah, you should go to China if you get a chance. The problem is, is everything's spread out so far. The benefit is, is that in a couple of very, very, very tight clusters, you can fill two and three weeks with just really great solid coasters. Um, I did three weeks there in 2014 and packed a ton of stuff in and only saw a very, very, very small side of the country. So lots, lots to see uh, on future trips. You have reliability issues for sure and arbitrary rules and weight limits and things like that, which can be frustrating, but, um, you know, it's, it's a good time. But anyway, so let's, let's take a look at this. So we're going to start with, um, just kind of building one of these and we'll see which style it takes. Well, all right. So let me turn off for whatever reason I've got the invalid heights cheat on. We're going to take that off. I don't recommend ever building with that unless you're specifically using it. All right, so we'll go one, two, three, four. Oh, that's five. One, two, three, four to start. I did. I China's food was okay. Um, the the meat is not as well trimmed as which is my biggest thing. Because I know it's stupid, but it was interesting. I, I did not mind the culture shock though. China was great. I prefer Japan though. Okay, so we're going to start with a lift hill. Now, lift hills are not the only thing that you can do with a wing coaster. Um, they also have uh, a launch, uh, the B&M's current only launch coaster. 
um, Thunderbird at Holiday World in um, in Indiana is the uh, launched wing coaster. So we'll take a look at that one here a little later. A um, couple different things you can do with this one is a shallow lift or a steep lift. You know, either either one that fits. Um, you can nobody's gonna look at you weird if you do a, a steep lift. I don't think. Um, so it's it's okay to go that direction. Um, but keep in mind that you also lose you know distance if you need it to go longer or uh, longer distance for whatever reason all right so once we get to the top of the uh layout here if we're going to do a dive drop to start you really have two uh, two kind of options here as far as looking at the realistic ones you have straight drops or you have these dive drop elements you don't necessarily have the curved uh drops which you could have you just need to figure out it needs to be steep if it's going to be doing that because the trains being as wide as they are you figure going around a corner uh, if that corner is not banked uh, then the say car one and car two the seats on the inside of that corner are going to get really close to each other so in order to avoid that you either have to have a wider radius of corner or you need to adjust the banking so that the radius bend is more in the kind of y direction rather than the x direction so those are some of the things to consider on layouts like this now uh, the other issue with these in rct is that the train itself can be a uh, a little bit heavy uh, friction is a little too high so it loses its speed really really fast and you can't make a normal layout with the current setup we're going to go seven trains, by the way. You can do anywhere from six to eight. If you're doing eight, make sure it's one of the big ones. Um, there's only a couple that are at eight, but seven is sort of your standard standard deal. Um, but let's let's look at this. So if we go into the, um, uh, where's my ride vehicles tool? We look at the twister coaster here, uh, which we can't look at just yet. It's not we'll look at the mass here in a little bit but the mass ends up we're, we're gonna end up changing the mass um, so one thing here as we come up and crest is we want to do a little bit of a downward drop here which doesn't quite look like the real thing but also keep in mind that the train isn't gonna make it through that without that little drop because you're gonna get a little bit of rollback here because it does climb ever so slightly into this roll so you're just gonna have to have that as a as a thing to deal with unfortunately all right, so looking at this, I'm way too high. So we're going to come back through here and do that. And you want to extend that out a little bit. You want to be rolling into that, that inversion after you've done a lot of the... Uh, uh, after you've gotten pretty much all the train up onto the flat portion. So you can do one, you can do, you don't need to do one, but sometimes it looks a little better when you do. All right, so like I said earlier, when we were watching the POV video. Let's put this on the track. You can see with the default station here how the train extends across. Now the train in the game is recognizing as only a single tile across, but it really visually is not. So while you have one across like this, and while, yeah, that's going to work, and if you had, say, land raised like this, you could get right through it. Visually, it's going to crash through those walls. So I suggest when building these to have a uh, two-tile consideration. So you're considering the, uh, let's get a square here. So you're considering your main tile as your main clearance, but then visual clearance for like scenery and supports and things like that. I add a quarter tile on either side. So this is my right envelope. So if I'm building supports, the closest one I'm going to do is probably a, a center tile. Where is it? There is it. There it is. A center tile support at the, at the earliest. So it's outside of that. We don't really want to go anywhere closer than that. It just ends up looking a little bit weird. So in order to facilitate that, since right now I'm one against this, I'm going to go ahead and build a, another loop into here. And then we'll start that way. So now I'm one away or two away from the station, which is good. It gives us a little bit of space there. It gives us some space to put a station also.
So speed hills are another thing that you will see on these, which I think is kind of neat. Uh, so we're going to kind of do some of those things, and this is going to turn into more of an out-and-back type layout, I think. You don't necessarily need to worry about getting your speed exactly right for zero-g rolls and other rolls. Because since these take really slow inversions, it, it's not so much of a concern as, you know, another, another particular ride might be. Like a, like an inverted coaster, for example. You don't want it too fast, though. That's probably the, the bigger consideration, is you just want to make sure it's nice and smooth through all of these elements. All right. Got some space to work with here. So cornering is good, inversions are good. What I would suggest against typically is using the small inversions in the game. So I would suggest against using small loops and I would suggest against using corkscrews uh, in a ride like this, just because they're so small in this game that it just doesn't quite look right with these wider trains. So really I'm sticking to Immelman and dive loop type elements, uh, like this dive drop, I'm sticking to big loops, I'm sticking to these rolls, which we'll use as zero G rolls, and also as, you know, barrel rolls and other things of that nature. All right. Now we're going to try and turn this around just a little bit. As far as inversions go, so this is a one, two, three so far. The the most you're going to see on some of these is about six. Um, so that's that's probably as far as you want to go. Um, Gatekeeper has six, and something like uh, that one we looked at at HB World. That one's got five. Um, five seems to be sort of the the typical typical spot. <clears throat> but six is six is fine. All right, so <clears throat> a couple different things we can do with this one. Um, I'm gonna try and go up to roll here into a I'll roll, which I'm a little bit shy of. And use this as sort of our turnaround. We will go ahead just so we make sure we don't have track on the ground. Lower this. Okay, so now we're turned around. We've got one, two, three, four inversions, and then we'll save for our last roll, uh, the sort of drawn out roll that you see on some of those. All right, we're a little too close for that. Let's see if we can get one more out, if that makes a difference. It does, although again, visually, if you look at this, that while it is clear, it's probably maybe a little closer than we probably want it to be. So we're at 55 there, we'll go one more. Should be alright. So we're really just trying to get those different elements in there, doing different things. A lot of directional changes, a lot of corners. 
What we can do also is come around, say, the other direction if we wanted. So we can try that, actually. Maybe that may offer us a better option here. We don't have to do an inversion as a turnaround either. So that's something to consider too. Like you can do almost a PM um hyper style turnaround. And that'll work just fine also. The kind of like high bank corners, this sort of is similar to what you might see on Thunderbird at Holiday World. Okay, our clearances are close on that one. Oops, sorry about that. I'll go quiet. He's got a lot to say. You're okay, dog. All right. This, I think, is going to look a little bit better. Because now, not only did we get our turnaround here, we've also got a cross over here, a cross over here. Then we kind of get back to some of these other crossovers on the layout. And depending on how we want to do this too, we're not too far from being able to call it complete. You could put a roll here and then go right down into the brakes, but we also don't have enough brake run here. That's a little bit too much. We can do this instead, and this may be the way that we end it. Wing coasters don't have to be very long, but they can be. You know, you look at something like, you know, Phoenix, which is 2,600 feet. The Raptor, the original one, is, is pretty short. That's 2,500 feet. And then you look at something like um, Falcon at, at one, uh, Ushi Sunak, which is 4,100 feet. You look at Gatekeeper, which is... 4,100 feet. Those are your kind of long ones. Um, Parrot Coaster, another one at Ocean Kingdom, that one's nearly 4,200 feet also. So there's a pretty good variety. Uh, that That is the nice thing about these rides is that you can offer a lot of variety for very, you know, uh, for a, a pretty simple ride. All right. And then... We're going to look at this from a brake run standpoint. This one is going to run two trains because it only needs two trains. Um, if you put a mid-course brake run in, you could run more than that. Last thing I'm going to do here is just put a tabletop on this hill just to... Move it a little bit. Okay, so now we get to this and we'll take our second train. And then let's take a look at this. Our brake run is probably a little bit smaller than it needs to be. Um, so in order to counteract that, I'm going to pull out that just to give it a little bit more. Okay, so Twister Coaster 1. We look at these trains, and they have a mass of 500 for one and then 300 for the others. So that's awfully slow. So we're going to go ahead and get into our console, and we'll go to rides list. Um, we are looking at the Twister Coaster 1, which is 004. So we do rides with an S, set mass, 004, and then we're going to go with... 
we'll start with a thousand and then we'll see how things go from there we might adjust it down further from that just depending on how things go Wing coasters are interesting in that they're not quite as intense as a lot of other rides, only because you've got the people separated by such a large distance between left and right that you really can't whip it through a bunch of inversions. So you got to take it pretty easy through some of these, um, which is, you know, means a little bit slower on some of the inversions throughout, which is not a bad thing. So you look at this, that's, that's reasonably sped up, I think. That's fine. You kind of want it to almost look a little clunky as it goes around, like almost like it's sort of easing through some of these elements. And then we'll cruise it into the brakes there. This one's on the shorter end, but it kind of fits that out and back type look for these. Also with that dive drop element in there. One of the things to remember is to go through and work down your brake run speed so it doesn't hit the brakes and totally crash itself into there. So we'll call this sort of layout number one. Yeah, exactly. For the airtime hills, you set you set a lot of this up for theming. I mean, these these rides almost inevitably have decent theming. Even the parks that don't typically theme, you get some pretty interesting ideas out of them because there's such a good nature with this wide train to be able to theme it. So like this airtime hill you can theme and you know, squeeze squeeze things through it. I mean, you you figure your clearance envelope for this uh let's see here Make sure i'm not zero clearance so we're gonna go we'll do one more just to well, i don't really have to so your clearance envelope in in my opinion is basically this so you can really you can really do a lot with it and, and i agree i think you do need theming on these to really make them what they are they can be kind of this your run of the mill standard ride if you don't have one, but the unique elements that these rides have combined with the ability to theme them, I think makes them interesting. A little bit slow on that loop, but not too bad. Okay, so let's go back to the database then real quick. Let's look at a few more. So one of the ones that I want to look at is uh, this one. Um, so Flight of the Demons here at uh, Hyde Park. Uh, just because it's got some kind of interesting elements. This is one of the earlier ones that really did just sort of weird elements. And this is the one here. It's this sort of double inversion where it's a corkscrew that sort of wraps into this like diving corner into another corkscrew. Now the coaster itself isn't necessarily rated as well as other wing coasters out there, but it looks cool. Um, and, you know, for the purposes of RCT, you kind of want it to look cool. Um, so there's some pretty interesting elements throughout. Um, why don't we take a bigger ride on this one? All right. Emergency braking. Uh, all right. Come on. All right. Thanks again to Coaster Force for the video. This is one that I've not gotten a chance to ride. I've done I've done the wing coasters in the US. So Gatekeeper and X Flight and Thunderbird. And I've done the wing coaster in uh Chamlong at uh Ocean Kingdom, so Parrot Coaster. I think that's it. I think that's it. These have done very well in Europe and done incredibly well in China. There are more of these in China than I think any other B&M coaster, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so this one starts with that dive drop again. We got our little airtime hill right after the start of the or that drop. Big Immelman here wrapping around underneath the track. Unfortunately, some kind of interesting things like this that we can't quite do in RCT. Um, 
I do like this high up inversion into this kind of carousel turn that drops all the way down to the ground. Here's the double inversion that we looked at. So wrapping around into this curve here and then rolling out on the other side. And coming up into these super high banked corners. The higher the banking, the tighter you can get your corner and then back into the brakes. So pretty interesting as far as layout goes. Now granted, as I said, and as Fred's confirmed here in chat, is it's kind of nothing special as far as the overall goes. But let's look at the uh, only launched one. Let's look at Thunderbird. All right, so let's go with go with this side. Lots of different options. Cat ads today, apparently. All right. So this one is is my current favorite. Uh, just the launch is cool, and the elements are just very nicely done in general. I would absolutely love to see some more of these. This is LSM launched. A little bit of a, a show scene here in the beginning. Launch out into this pretty hefty sized Immelman. Another big loop. And this sort of high banked turnaround into another high banked turnaround. I do like that sequence, the kind of one and two. Rolling up into a zero G roll. In the woods, too, which definitely adds, adds some interesting interaction. And we have this themed a, uh, barn here that has one pass through and this other pass through with the long roll there to end. I do like the long roll. The problem is in RCT, you really don't have it. So whether it's a zero G roll, a barrel roll, a long roll, whatever that may be, you're stuck with the six tile long element. So it's a three for one roll, one half roll, and three for the other. So a little bit harder to pull that out sometimes, but um, still interesting. And that long roll is a good way to end and a uh, layout. So Let's look at um, flying wing coaster here at uh, Happy Valley. Um, you can kind of see this really interesting one that's a, a half zero G roll, half roll into this turn, which then comes down into the brakes. So sort of an interesting element. Here's another one of those fast airtime hills like we looked at earlier. This one fits sort of the layout that we just built. So this is more of an out and back layout. Actually, this is about as out and back of a layout as you can get. And this one's already been cloned once and is coming again, I believe. Uh, let's see, here should be a good overall layout. Not all of it, but here it is. Here's a good overall shot. So you've got, on the right hand side, your big lift hill with the uh, dive drop. You've got an airtime hill into a uh, big loop, then a speed hill, giant corkscrew, this zero G roll type element, carousel turnaround, and then that uh, sort of weird stretched inversion, a dip, and then a climb into the brakes. So if you're going for out and back layout, this is sort of the poster child of that. But let's jump back in. We'll do a launch coaster. Oh, 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 oh. RCT is freaking out. There we go. All right, so let's try again. And we did see that that thousand mass is probably where we're going to stick for now. One, two, three, four. I don't really have a rhyme or reason for going to four. I just think it, it seems sufficiently tall enough. Again, we'll go seven. All right, so first things first, we're going to have it come out to a break. 
We can put a block break there if we want, but don't necessarily have to. But then we will add our booster section here. Give us some, some speed. We'll see what happens there. We can adjust it if we need to, but that's where we'll begin. The challenge with rides where you have to adjust the massing is you don't really get much of a chance to test that. Okay. We're going to wrap right out of those into a... You either go this way or do more of a dive out of it. Neither one looks particularly great. Uh, in this instance, I am going to do a roll. I mean, if that if that inversion that we saw at Happy Valley is any uh, indication, um, you can make these look sort of ugly, and it's okay. Uh, yeah, so Thunderbird is more or less what we're going for here. Not necessarily the same layout, but something similar. I am going to stretch this a little bit. So, like, I'm going to put a flat piece of track right in there. Just to give us some a little bit of, of distance. Okay, so I'm at 110. I'm actually gonna back this off, but then I can come in here with one less. So we look at the top of this loop is 105. The implement here is 110, so we'll just want to keep that low to go through everything. That's also why I built it up so that we have a little bit of space to go here for these larger inversions. And you can if you have the space. So this is sort of a, a classic inversion here is doing the um, coming up into this, doing the quarter loop, then rolling out. So that's another way to do it. The challenge is your, your bottom and your top is a little bit different. Hey Claude, hey Hydro. Yeah, we're doing B&M wing coasters today. Uh, this is typically our off week here. Um, it is Saturday, though. This is actually supposed to be an off week, but uh, the uh, DK folks on the DK server are doing a uh, wing coaster contest this month. And so in order to... Uh, Oh, but that one I offered to do a um, a stream. So oh, here we are learning about this. Okay, so we're gonna take one of the things that we learned from that last uh, from when we were watching Demon there, and we're gonna do a roll into a the short climb and and the zero G roll here. Actually, did you end up with a layout that you liked, Hydro? I know you were working pretty hard on this one, and a lot of a lot of people were offering some some my answers that looked pretty good. Okay, so we have our loop. Or implement or loop, turn around, got your zero G roll here. And really, it is just about the getting the turnarounds right and getting everything as far as that goes correct. Just to get a layout that feels smooth enough. Yeah, Falcon's a beautiful ride, especially with the rock work that they put into it. Uh, 
I'm going to change the mass hydro. So the, the biggest thing with these that I've been saying in the beginning is that and really to get a good layout, you got to change the mass. You just, there's really not a good way around it. Which is a little bit of a shame. Perhaps eventually we can have somebody build us a slightly better weighted ride, but I'm happy to have what we have at the moment. All right. That'd be a little bit too shy here. Now we can get rid of this part, but let's let's go ahead and just do this. I'm sure there is. I mean, it's really just a matter of the the train type doesn't so much matter as the massing does. So let's just find a train that's got similar mass to the final the final mass that we want, and we can use that for testing. We'll go ahead and put a block break straight away here, just so that it clears that. The next ride can launch. We're to simulate a little bit better controls there. Now you've got a pretty interesting roll above your station to theme out. This is on the shorter end, but that's okay. Doesn't need to be very long. So this would be diagonal braking if you feel like uh, if you feel like you're wanting to be, you know, a little more advanced, you can shoestring that. Give ourselves a second train. All right, and then we're going to go rides list, figure out which one here is Twister 2, 005. So we're going to go rides, set mass, 005, 1000. If we need to adjust that, we can certainly do so. We're going to see how quickly it loses some speed here at the end. All right, it's a little bit slow through there. We can see if we need to adjust the speed here or bring it down. Actually, that's not too bad. I'm feeling okay about that. Feeling okay about that. A little bit fast through that roll. And then that ending is a little bit quick, so not too too bad, but we can we can adjust that. So maybe it's gonna come back a little bit. Yeah, you know, as far as um pallets go, just not even being a custom palette, but this this old or, or the original palette orange I've always been a huge, huge fan of. It's very pretty. We'll stand that up just a little bit. We can also do something like we want to extend it even further. Question being if we can clear it, which I'm not convinced that we can. And that, that's fine. We'll just go up to this element. It will be a little bit fast, but not awfully so. Yeah, orange is often untouched as far as palettes go, and some of that I think is just the the bright orange is a little bit really orange for some things, but I'm not opposed to some of the other options. I do like a good, I do like this good deep orange on occasion and on some of the custom palettes, I'm a big fan of the different orange levels.
I'd agree with that. Or the uh, orange with the blue is a good look. Out of curiosity. You can always see you can do it with the blue there. Blue here. The blue here. To be honest, most of these work. Kind of partial to this one. The uh, Six Flies Goliath or Titan colors. All right, so we have to reset this again just because every time you reset it, the mass resets. You thinking blue track hydro with the orange supports? Let us go and take a look while we. Do that you want to go bold you go there with the dark blue or we can follow the colors of flying wing coaster which we looked at earlier we keep it green or go orange which actually don't mind the orange well, honestly that looks all right now granted you probably want a shoestring or diagonal break run if you can uh, but that's not too bad um, there. Thank you for the follow, Claude, also. Appreciate you joining us for today. A couple things to note on this one is I can actually adjust this launch a little further down and then have this as sort of a hold break if I want to. The problem is if you put a break out here, it's going to grab all the way down until it's off of the break, so you lose some effectiveness of your launch track. Uh, which is a little bit disappointing. Agree with that though, purple, dark purple. Now that, that's a good color. The English palette, which is the one that I like to use quite a bit. Um, I am a big fan of the two purples that are in there, but the purple and orange I've always thought are a very nice combination, whether you're doing sort of spooky theming or kind of more autumnal warm colors, whatever that may be. I think this is a really nice, nice look. All right, so there is another one here. You could. You can definitely remove the block break there if you want it to sit out there. So you could theoretically drop a block break there. But keep in mind that you don't want to get rid of the block as far as... Or, or get rid of the visual block, so the amount of space for it. So if you have a two-train operation on one of these, you want your station plus at least two to two and a half trains worth of brake run behind. So we've got say one, a half plus another one here, uh, which is, is plenty, not at all too long. Something to consider as far as that goes. All right, so there is number two, and then I think I'll do one more. We'll do one more, more compact variety. Let's jump back and see what else we haven't looked at yet. So there's unfortunately one that's been sitting as standing but not operating uh, for quite a while. This is um, at Hotgo, or sorry, not that one. This is the one that's at Hotgo Dream World. Uh, this is very similar to the one at HB World. And a while back, uh, probably just before the pandemic, there were a bunch of rumors that King's Dominion was going to get a wing coaster of similar layout, whether it be this one or not. There was up for debate there. But this is sort of that compact variety like we saw at HB World, which has the dive drop, the loop, the zero-G roll, the Immelman, that sort of weird half zero-G, half uh, barrel roll, nice kind of carousel drop, a corkscrew, and then also a helix finale, which is very different than a lot of these that you see. So interesting there for sure. Uh, we look at some of the other ones that do this x flight here at six size great america which uh, hydro is very familiar with this is doing the same same deal i don't know why they're all turned okay there we go the same same sort of deal for this one i do love that shot there it really shows what you can do with the with that whole setup there 
Or actually, let's go watch the POV for HB World, because I think that should be here. Heaven's Wing. All right. So this is uh, Maya P.A. Masane, uh, who has awesome, awesome, awesome Asian uh, POVs. Highly recommend their channel. So this one's a center-mounted POV. Again, the cars are on either side. So you have a very different experience via left and right, which actually adds to the rewritability of these coasters, I feel. Um, I find that every single one of them that I've done, I have a strong preference to which side I prefer. And if they have a dive drop, it is always, 100% of the time, the one that goes up and over. So in this case, left side for me would be my preference, and that's where I would start if I ever get a chance to ride this one. So there's that dive drop start. Big loop. Zero G. Another big Immelman here. And here's the sort of half inversion, half inversion out. So half zero G, half sort of stretched inline roll. Very interesting, very odd. Big corkscrew roll here, and then into this Felix finale. Some pretty tight clearances there. Then into the brakes. So very interesting, pretty cool compact layout. And before we finish up with that, we'll look at uh, we'll look at the POV here for Phoenix, just because I think it's interesting enough. And I know a lot of the European folks have ridden this one. Uh, let's see here. Booster touring, round of view. Man, everybody's got POVs of this one. Uh, let's see here. We will go with... First one. The wing coaster train doesn't do corkscrews. I thought it does. I don't recommend them um, for them. Uh, yeah, the multi-dimension train does not. I'm not sure if that's the one that you're thinking on. And yeah, Hydra, th those brakes, end up, they have to be pretty tall for one, and those are magnetic brakes there, the, the fixed ones. Thanks to Extreme Coasters Network here for this POV. All right. And if you're new to the game and watching this one, you you don't see this in your um, uh, you don't see the wing coaster train in your files. It is a downloaded custom content train. Uh, so I will post the file here that we build today. If you download this, then you will get that file for you. So we get that turn into the dive drop. There's a great airtime hill here, which actually looks to have some pretty strong airtime. A nice big Immelman here into this low to the ground speed corner. So. Big uh, kind of fun skirting the ground for those right side folks. A roll parallel to that uh, uh, that hill there, and then this great uh, twisted airtime hill into turnaround, and then into the brakes. So beautiful looking coaster. I agree, Hydra. I think this is one of the best looking blues on a coaster out there. Very, very, very nice, and. Um, According to chat, from what Fred has said, the outside left seat is the best one. So I will leave it to the viewer to find out for themselves. Hopefully I will find out one of these days. All right, so there is Phoenix. So let's go back and let's do one more. Let's do one more here. I think we're going to try and do something compact, sort of like the uh, HP World or X Flight, something like that. Haven't done that variety yet. I 
Okay, we'll do our dive drop and our looping. Then go through here and do a zero G roll that's on the lower side. But I typically want them to be faster. If you want your zero G roll to be properly zero G, then I uh, ought to have it stretch a little bit there. We can do this to get us a little bit more more there, which is not awful, but what I think I want to do is drop this back underneath. And because of that, we're going to reverse the direction of this roll. Well, on the whole, I would say if you can avoid it, don't use the corkscrews on this kind of layout just because I these trains just don't translate well into the corkscrews. Uh, they're just so tight, and I don't think it's a quite a good look as far as that goes. All right, how close are we to being acceptable? We are two away from being acceptable. Stretch that a little bit. Oops. So we can come through here and do like a speed hill of sorts. The challenge that we talked about earlier is you've got your passing trains here that are not not that the trains would ever pass at the same time, but you have your track passing here, which is going to go right next to the other track. So it's going to look like it clips through it, which I just really am not a huge fan of. Thanks, things on tracks. So I appreciate that. Um, you can use uh, the inline twist pieces that's under the barrel rolls. Uh, the only challenge that you've got is that the B and M uh, pieces you've got uh, have all barrel rolls. So you could go in here and transition into something like the uh, limb track. And uh, let's see here, you can do. An inline twist such as that, which is a flatter look if you want to go for that sort of elongated type look. Oh, shoot, there is. You're right. <laughs> Thank you, Ghoster. Uh, yep. No, you're absolutely right. For whatever reason, I couldn't think about that one. Okay, so we will go. Be in this direction instead. Yeah, I can't say I've tried it hydro, so it very well could be an option. I don't necessarily, I, get, I could go back the other way that I had come earlier and do the same sort of thing and skirt underneath here, but I don't, uh, 
don't quite want to go in that same direction. Do Oops. Come back, RCT. No. Do another barrel roll here. Let's see. I want one more out of that. Now we're going to have one, two, three, four, five inversions. Feels about right. Will there ever be an inverted wing? I'm not sure why you would. I don't think there's really any benefit to that. Um, you also have some major supporting challenges for sure. Structurally, I'm not quite sure that will work. Um, one of the, the benefits that you have of of this one and you think about how these trains are set up let me see if i can find a good picture of it um let's see okay so let's look at this picture here you can see how the frame of the um the train so you get your chassis with the wheels and everything and then you have your horizontal frame that sits on it it comes down and then across and that's where the seats mount to um, so your seats are more level with the chassis here, which is going to offer you a little bit of a smoother ride on on the whole. Um, I mean, granted, if you did an inverted, you, you really the seats don't change. You just now have more supports around the thing, and you, you wouldn't necessarily have that uh, same benefit. So I don't think there's really the benefit there um, for everything. If we look at something like. Irius Baco, this is the only Intamin wing coaster. Intamin's variety uses just a really big single beam that comes across. Let's see if we can find one. Here we go. So this one is pretty much just a single beam that sits across higher up off the track. So you're going to get more of those vibrations there. Uh, which is part of the reason that a lot of folks say that Furious Baco is very rough. So, something to consider just as far as that goes as you're building. So, let's go back to the. Oop, and freaking out a little bit. All right. It, and that's the thing, is it's one of those that uh, in all likelihood is a lot more fun than it is rough, or even if it is rough, it is still fun. I mean, that's a lot of coasters have some pretty unfortunate tracking, but can be reasonably fun rides. Okay. So let's get our wing coaster. Yeah, that that would be my only complaint with Furious Baco is it's a very short coaster. Uh, okay, let's get ourselves a second train. All right, rides list. Twister Coaster Three, number six.
Andrew, the only reason that I have it is just to give it enough speed to properly roll through that element. Um, you can you can also speed up the lift hill to make it happen, but with the barrel roll element, you do lose that space. If you do the inline twist, you won't quite have that same problem. So that may be the way to go. If we go that direction, which I'll, I'll do in just an example of that here after we finish this one, I've just always kind of preferred this one because it is angled down slightly. So it's just trying to figure out what what is going to look best. All right, so let's see how this one does. I've had it where it doesn't before, but I sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. But I, I guess that's the thing is usually mine doesn't quite go through the, the whole thing there. Oh, we are a little bit too high. I'm gonna be famous. Bigfellows.com. Yeah, we're gonna not do that. All right. So a couple things. We'll speed this one up here. All right. Oh, well, that's how, that's why it happened. I didn't actually do it when I was in there last time. Uh, whoop. I don't know why you would ever buy followers. I mean, I guess if you want to make this into a career, sure, but. All right. But I feel like if you do that, it's not going to happen anyway. All right. Let's see how this one goes. Yeah, that's true too. So, right, this would be a great way to get banned. Drew Llama, big coasters only. Only coasters. A little slow through that, but not too bad. So this is still a little bit of a problem here where it crosses, at least just visually. I don't hate it, but it's also not something that you probably want to go with. And then again, diagonal breaks if you want to do that. A little bit short for a diagonal break run. You could also do the shorter corner here. But we're going to take the take the balance of the two. Yeah, it, will be fa it will be faster with peeps. I just hate planning for that. All right, so real quick, one of the things that we suggested earlier was the inline twist. So just as an example of how that can look. in here and do our limb that's just a matter of coming behind and doing one of these guys And then just to see too how how fast this looks. <laughs> Thank you, V1. <laughs> Appreciate the uh, subscription, help and support the channel. And then I can also do this just so you can see how rough these look. Not only that, it's also going to be stupid fast. Okay. B&M wing coaster. Do a six-car train. No need to adjust our mass here.
this is another way you can consider. Which honestly looks pretty good. And you can see too why that looks bad. Not just because of the fact that it's crazy fast, but just because it doesn't look good. Let's uh let's pause it there. You can see it just it's a little bit tight the way that it kind of rolls through that inversion. I just I'm not a huge, huge fan of that overall look. Not to say that you can't use it, but I just I think you in general it's nice to have the um larger elements. But anyway, that is an option. I will leave that here in the file just for whoever wants to give it a try, but that's that's the way that you would do an inline twist. And there we go. All right, so that's three different looks at what a uh, wing coaster can be. So we've got our sort of out and back kind of one. We got relatively squat out and back. If we could really go another inversion or element more like an airtime hill or whatever go out again turn around and come back so this is a little on the shorter end but not too bad we got our launch coaster here with the lsms agree as i think we say every stream now we need giant quirks this is a petition petition for larger corkscrew inversions and yeah i'm a huge i'm a big fan of this layout i think this this works pretty well i, I like these sorts of interactions where you can get you know crossovers like this and this where you drop underneath and kind of through a couple of tracks and this one circles around. I think it's a nice look overall. And then wherever it was, here's our you kind know, of more compact variety. I think the this is my favorite bit of this, just kind of the benefit of having that little element there. This could go smaller. If I was gonna turn it sooner, I might consider doing a quarter loop and making this a little tinier. Uh, I may play around with that a little bit later, perhaps. But um, that's going to be it for today. Just these three. Um, I may actually be streaming here a little bit later uh, tonight with um, some non-RCT things. But um, that i got to get set up for. So until then, um, feel free to sub to the channel or uh, follow the channel if you want to get those notifications. But um, I will be building a uh, Lego uh, roller coaster car. So we're going to go with that here in a little bit. But until then, thank you guys very much for watching uh, this special edition of Andrasic Amusement Academy. We will be back next week with the full four-hour AAA stream. Uh, suggestions, feel free to send me if you have some ideas for what you'd like to see. But uh, otherwise, we will see you next week, and have a uh, good evening. Bye now.